So in this video I'm going to have a look at the Mini Gearbox. Now I find gearboxes absolutely fascinating and I love to get an understanding of how they work. However, a lot of people will look at this and just not get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the parts of the gearbox and I'm going to show you how each gear is selected. So the first thing I'm going to identify is this, that is the idler. So that is um, purely transferring the rotation from the engine to the bottom gear here. Now that bottom gear, which you can't quite see, is actually connected to this gear down here. Now that, in turn, is also connected to the lathe shaft, okay, all the way along here. So that is as far as the first motion shaft goes, or as I like to call it, the input shaft. Its main duty is to transmit the power onto the lathe shaft, but it also has another purpose which I'll show you in a minute. So you'll notice on this lay shaft you've got all these other gears that are connected to it and are also continually engaged. So this one, that one and that one. And that is three gears. This is first gear, that is second gear, that is third gear and fourth gear is a bit more confusing. It's not that one, it's actually no gear. And what I mean by that is the first motion shaft here would be locked on to basically the output shaft. So there would be no gears, it would be a one to one ratio. So one, two, three, four, and the last one that's worth pointing out is this one here. That is basically your reverse. So I'm gonna put it in first gear, and the way I do that is the input gear selector needs to be turned fully anti-clockwise, and then let's have a look which way is it. Uh, it is pull it out. And when I do that, a quick turn, it engages this one. So this is a synchronizer, and this is one and two synchronizer. And what that has done is it's locked this gear onto the output shaft. Both synchronizers, that one and that one, are linked permanently on the shaft. So now the input is coming through the first motion onto the lay gears and it's this gear at the end that is being used and locked to the output. The output, you can just about see it down here, drives the differential. So that is first gear. So let's take it out of first gear. So now we're back in neutral, just to prove by the way. That is neutral. And also it gives an indication of what is connected to the output shaft. You can see everything turning. So the second gear, let's try the second gear, that will be push it in. There we go, that is second gear. So just turning that around. This time, again, the input is coming through the first motion onto lay gear. This time, this gear is the one that's locked to the output. So, okay, let's go to neutral again. Now we're going to go to third. Now third's a bit hard for me to do because there's no way of knowing whether I'm going to go in reverse. So I think it's probably about there. No, too far. Still too far. There we go. So third is... Get the pull. There we go. That is third. So first motion onto the Lagers and then it's picked off this one. This is the gear that is locked to the output shaft. Okay, the last gear we want to do is fourth gear. And as I said, that is no gear. Okay, so now what we've done, first motion shaft is actually locked via this synchronizer to the output. Should I go the right way? So although the power or the turning motion is being transferred to the lay gears, we're not using any of those gears. So this is why fourth gear should be the most economical gear, because you're not actually using any gears. It's a one in, one out ratio. So that's all the first four gears, and obviously the last one we want is reverse. Now it's hard to see the reverse. It's right down the bottom here. But if I turn the selector all the way 
clockwise and push it in. Get a good clunk. What that's done is it's engaged a, a little gear, well two gears. One part of the gear is turning on this one, so that was the uh, first gear on the lay shaft. And it's also connecting to the reverse gear on the first second synchronizer. So now when I turn it, this is quite a confusing one, you will see everything turns opposite. So there you go, I will take that out of reverse and now go back in neutral. So hopefully that has been some use to you guys. Um, I haven't gone into the detail of bulk rings and synchronizers. I've just shown you basically where the four gears and reverse are and how they are selected. So I hope that's been useful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for some more videos.